Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Choose Positive Living right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I am your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest is Stephanie Raffalock. Oh, aging, you know, that cursed word that everybody runs away from. But what if there was a delightful little book on aging and an advocate for positive aging? Well, this is what this show is all about today. Stephanie is an author, a blogger, a speaker, and much more. She's an advocate for positive potential of aging. For several years, she has been writing and studying about the positive, active, graceful aging movement. She helps self-aware educate people who are interested in shrinking the toxic myths of stereotypes of aging. You know, that grandma sitting on the rocking chair knitting away. Mm -mm, no, we've got so much more to do, folks. She's all about celebrating life no matter what your age is. She released her first book, A Delightful Little Book on Aging, April 2020. And this book will take you on a journey into older age with the help of a story a philosophy of gratitude. She also writes about how to become wise elders of our culture, the universe of life transforming forces, grief, gratitude, loss, and love. Uh, she also has another book there, which we will be talking about, The Creatix Rising, Unlocking the Power of Midlife Women. So we have a lot to talk about here today, but an advocate for aging. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Stephanie. Thanks for having me. We are baby boomers. So, you know, most of us here that they're anything. Oops, so, and here comes my background again. It always flashes in at least once in the show. Um, and just like the pine tree and the ocean watering, everything is about a flow in life, isn't it? Everything is about a rhythm and, and just stepping into an older age is that it's just a life's journey. It's, it's a it's a different frequency, a different vibe, and there's a different importance around it because at this age, we should know what really is important in our life, what to feed, what not to feed, when not to get upset about something, just let it go. And so there's a lot of benefits to being older, isn't there? Well, yeah, I mean, this is the most remarkable and noble passage in mm -hmm. one's life is, you know, you hit 60, and as you said in that lovely introduction, it's like there, there is something new. Mm -hmm. and, and every part of age is like that. When you think about it in the, in the totality of it, it's like, you know, in your 20s, it was a time to separate out from your family, to individuate, to find out like who you were and what you wanted in life and stuff. And then in your 30s, you know, maybe you took on a mortgage, a marriage, you had a couple of kids. 40s, your career starts to develop and get bigger. 50s, you begin to think about what will I do with retirement, which is a word I don't particularly like, although it's, I don't know what to substitute it with at this point. Transition. <laughs> well, transition is good. But 60 really is the threshold. It is the doorway to this very remarkable passage, no less remarkable than separating out from your parents and figuring yeah. out who you are. It's just that you figure out who you are in these older times. And I think older women especially, we hold, a to we hold a torch, we carry a light that illuminates the path for the women that come behind us, mm -hmm. for the women that are approaching 45, 55, 65 years old. And that's, that's really a, a noble and sacred thing is to hold that light for those women. So I just think that age is a, is a remarkable time and it doesn't have to be this decline, this doom and gloom attitude yeah. about aging, or a lot of what I hear from women sometimes is that they feel um, insignificance, that their um, relevance has yeah. slipped away somehow. And it's like, you know, that's a call that's coming from inside the house. Mm -hmm. it's not up to the world to make you feel like you're significant. You need to know that about yourself at this point. And if you don't, then that's some work for you to do. That's what some of your inner work will be to find that significance because self-knowledge reveals all things. Yeah. 
And that's a lot about what this age is about, is what is revealed to you about the arc of your life as you come to the, you know, the other side of the arc, as we march, all march towards eternity. Um, this is a beautiful time. There's an, a reason that nature keeps us alive after midlife. And, you know, supposedly we're meant to be able to live into our hundreds. You know, we're designed that way, but our lifestyle um, and also I think our limitations you know, put a black on you that, that, well, I'm old at 60. No, you're not. No. This is still kind of midlife. You know, this is a wonderful chapter. Okay, maybe our physicality isn't the same as it was in our 20s, 30s or 40s. But the slowing down does not mean that you are tuning out. It just means you're tuning into a different frequency, a different style of life. And I think there's a, a lot more poignancy to what we do more deliberation to how we because the energy we're going to spend on what we do now and whom we have around us is more deliberate um we're not looking at you know those necessarily the same career goals as right. 30s and 40s we're not looking at you know the you're finding your tri pack you know of other mums and dads that you're going to go to soccer with and everything else you know, we're not looking at the pack mentality we're looking at people that are in the same frequency the same vibe who want to get out there and enjoy life and that example of getting out there and still being of purpose and enjoying life sends a beacon of light out to people out there way back in their 20s in their 30s and going oh well 60 isn't over you know it's not on the porch knitting or or you know that i'm obsolete then the oldest person i've interviewed um is 88 who started her own tv show at, at 86 you know and it's like if you've still got it still use it and you become an inspiration to others on like well if they can i can well i love what you said about you know living life because mm. it's really it's that simple yeah it's like you don't want to let slowing down make it so that that means slowing down means receding from mm. life. It just means doing life in a different fashion, in a yes. slower fashion. Yes. But, um, but living life, mm. you know, we are designed, I think, to um, develop psychologically, develop spiritually, really until the day we die. Absolutely. Regardless of physical limitations, mm. um, and there will be some, but it doesn't mean that things stop. You know, it's I not really, over. <laughs> oh, exactly. And adaptability, you know, you and I talked a little bit um, before the show about COVID. Mm -hmm. but, you know, the boomers really did well in COVID. Yes. Um, but, you know, part of the reason that we did so well is that at 60 or 65 or 70, you learn a sense of adaptability. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't run anymore. It's like, mm -hmm. I've got some disc stuff in my lower back that I just won't take the pounding. So I've adapted. And the way that I've adapted is that I do brisk walking. My husband and I walk four to five miles every day. Wow. So it didn't, it didn't lead to like, well, I'm going to push myself to run or because I can't run, you know, life is over. It was like, you just adapt. Exactly. That, that's part of, of aging too, is that the goodies are found in the adaptability. How well can you adapt? Yeah. Common sense steps in. I mean, we had different type of common sense in when raising children or when in business, but the different kind of common sense is now, it's like, you know, I've only got so much energy I'm willing to give. And I'm not gonna give it to hysteria or I'm not gonna give it to conflict. I mean, I'm gonna give it where I feel it's really going to be um, beneficial not only to myself but to the to those whom i give it to and so i think there's a hell of a lot more laid backness in the 60s plus it's like i'm going to relish every moment and i'm going to take the time to relish every moment it's not about the foot to the pedal and get down to the bottom of the highway anymore the destination it's about that journey taking time to smell the roses you know sip the coffee watch the people go by and just really immerse yourself in life and and really enjoy all the beauty that is around us because that's when we actually understand oh this is what living's really about <laughs> yeah i i would agree you're such a kindred spirit in <laughs> in this sense and you know we stop looking for the destination point yeah. I mean, all throughout 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, there's this great kind of anxiety and stress about the destination point. Yes. Well, now that I've arrived, life is going to be smooth from here on. <laughs> and 
you know, that never really happens. But <laughs> once you're of a certain age, you learn that there is no destination point. It's all, as Joseph Campbell said, the rapture of the experience. Mm -hmm. And so that's what these older days are. And, um, you know, I'm not opposed to sitting on the porch and knitting. I rather like knitting. Yeah, but it's not but your destination. It's not the destination. It's, it's, it's a choice. A, it's a stereotype. I mean, that, that's something yeah. that you, you know, once again, before the show, there's always these, these conversations that go on, you know, pre-show. But um, talking about, you know, some of the old stereotypes that, and they're really toxic stereotypes. Mm -hmm. They don't serve. I, I read an article not that long ago about a group of kids anybody under 50 as a group of kids, <laughs> yeah. um, what they thought older age was. And, you know, when you're 20 and you say, well, what is old age? They say, well, 40 is old mm -hmm. age. So now you ask a 40 year old, well, what is old age? Well, 60, but ask a 60 year old and they'll say, well, 80, you know, and it keeps like, you know, the bar keeps moving. Yeah. And it's like, I think that old age is really, it's not a, the number of years that you've lived. It's a mindset. Yeah an attitude that you know if i i just feel old and used up it's like well either you're ready to check out mm -hmm. um or or maybe you've given up too soon yeah that life still has this wonderful vibrancy and and joy attached to it regardless of the number of years that you've lived i don't know um in the early part of covid in england there was a guy um he used to be in the army and he did this uh walk I think it was just down the street, around the block, but it, it was to raise money. And uh, he, he just became a symbol, you know, because I think he was at the 97 or 100 and something. And then here in Victoria, we had a guy who just walked around his courtyard so many laps every day and raised money for it. And the people were out there cheering. And it was just, he gave him such a sense of purpose, you know, in the 90s and the 100s. Uh, and it became such a symbol of that, we are still useful. Yes. And I think that's one of the fears people have as they grow older. Will I still be useful? Will I still count? Will anybody see me? You know, if, if I can't do this for them, will I be ignored? And I think that usefulness is something that really can, can haunt some people. Yes, I think so. I don't know if, you're, if your listeners know about Maggie Kuhn, but I like to tell the Maggie Kuhn story. Mm -hmm. And Maggie Kuhn was a woman in the 1960s who started an organization that became known as the Gray Panthers. Um, when she retired in the 60s, there was a law in the United States that you had to retire at 65, even if your company was willing to keep you on, even yeah, if you yeah. wanted to continue working. So she retired from being a church secretary at the age of 65 and, you know, was bored out of her mind. And she saw that there were all the, this activity going on on the college campuses around the country um, because people were protesting the Vietnam War mm -hmm. as an unjust war. And she was very much a social activist. She was very into social justice and love. And so Maggie Kuhn went with her girlfriends who were also 65 to these college campuses. And she said, look, you're trying to organize, you know, protest marches and the, a real protest to be heard your views. You want your views to be heard about the Vietnam war. And so um, let us help you because yeah. we have years and years and years of experience of doing logistics. Yes. So these college kids kind of adopted her. They adopted Maggie Kuhn and somebody dubbed her once. Well, you're, you know, you're not like the Black Panthers. You're like the Gray Panthers. <laughs> I like that. So that was her organization. And Maggie Kuhn toured the country and was a public speaker and a writer until really almost till she died. She was, I think, in her mid nineties when she finally passed away, which was sometime in the early nineties. And, um, and I love her story mm -hmm. that she really made lemonade out of lemons. She found a sense of purpose. She hadn't really wanted to stop working. At least that's something that is open to us now. If yeah. one wants to continue working, there's not a law against it, but at the time there was. And so the, I love the Maggie Kuhn story. I, she I was, think it's perfect, you know, and, and what a perfect example of these are my years of experience. L take advantage of that experience. Let right. it be the structure for right. your voice to be heard instead of haphazard, you know? Right. And right. so, you know, this is, this is in so many cultures, they look at elderly people as the wise ones, 
and they go to them for the wisdom. It's the Western culture that seems to put them out to disposal. Right? Mm -hmm. So it is a way that we need to really relook at elderly people, uh, quote, quote, elderly, you know, plus gray hairs. I think we call it, this is called it the gray hairs, you know, and, and look at it for every gray hair they have there, there's a wisdom that came with it, you know, a, a, a journey of their own, something that they learned that they could pass on. And if you're willing to listen to it and allow, you know, um, them to immerse into your culture, you are going to be so much more beneficial for it. One of the things that I have here on, on my network is um, I used to be kind of the 40s plus with the listeners and the people I interviewed. And now it's going more and more into the 30s and the 20s because they realize the wisdom around them and they're tapping into it. But there's so many people of 60s plus that have started again. Well, I'm now doing what I really want to do. Right. Right. I, I'm now writing or I'm now speaking or I'm now started a new company. I'm doing it my way, not the corporate way. I've, I've done all the expectation. I'm now doing something that's passionate to me. And it's so illuminating. It really is to see this because it just says to us, look at everything that you've accumulated through your life. And now you're pouring it into something that's going to serve others. And it is self-serving. Because if we're passionate about us and it's keeping us alive, then we've got more to give. Our cup runneth over. Well, and it's, you know, it does lend itself to a great example. And I've thought a lot about what eldering is and how, mm. how one becomes an elder. And sometimes I think it's less about what we have to say and more about what we have to demonstrate. Yeah. Like the guy that you described that was walking, mm. you know, in his courtyard and people yes. were out there cheering him. He didn't have to tell people what he right. was doing. He didn't have to tell people that he had found a purpose. They could see it in his behavior. And I think that that's a lot of it. It's like how we live our life, mm. how we demonstrate life at this age for those around us. Um, my Maggie Kuhn was a woman named Austin. And it's funny because I now live in the city of Austin, <laughs> Texas. But um, a few years ago, I was in a little place called Ashland, Oregon. And the woman that lived down the hill from me was in her 80s when I met her. And she wrote a hand she did a handwritten invitation to my husband and I one day and stuck it in our mailbox and said, come meet some of your neighbors on my deck. And I thought, who does that? Mm -hmm. Jeez. So my husband and I went down to this woman's deck. And the first thing I noticed about Austin's deck, she must have been 84 when I first met her. And she was in the last years of her life, even though none of us knew it at the time. But she had a claw foot old fashioned bathtub mm. on her deck. And it was fully plumbed. And I said, Austin, do you take baths out here? And she said, well, I love to soak under the stars. Fabulous. <laughs> and so I started looking around and then I noticed that in the tree branch, not too far away from the house was a, a blue chandelier hanging. And I started to fall in love with this woman who would have chandeliers hanging from her trees and a clawfoot bathtub on her bathtub where she could soak under the stars at night. And she really became an example. A lot of young people gathered at Austin, Austin's house. She used to have drumming circles. And so these drummers, 20, 30 years old, would come and drum and chant with her. And when she passed a, a few, just a few years later, um, they honored her by coming to her deck and drumming. Mm. And that was how they paid homage. But that was a woman, once again, she didn't have so much to say to me about growing older, but she demonstrated it yes. with how she lived her life. She was the example. Yeah. I remember when I was, I think, 15, I just moved to South Africa and I met this woman in her 60s. And for some reason, I found her intriguing. And uh, she had lived in three different countries and she was talking about the experiences of each of those countries and I remember just looking I said I want to have that experience and I have <laughs> little did I know at that time that she lit something inside of me and you know I lived in England I've lived in South Africa I've lived in the States now in Canada and it's it's opened up that wonderment you know um, I was a sickly child so always limited to what I could do, where I could go, and what was expected of me. And there was somebody pressing the wonderment button 
of you know why she lived in different countries the experiences that she had and it was like is it possible for me and we had no idea just in a conversation or just the way that we live where it's going to be an example for someone else or how it's going to switch them to a different channel of possibilities and i think that just live just be be your exuberant self and it will as i said the cup will run off over and it, and it's going to pour onto the people who are receptive to it you can't make people who are not receptive receive it it's for the people that are open ready to receive that will really get the benefit out of it good stuff mm. <laughs> um you know i've I've just become a grandma at 66, oh, um, three weeks old today. So it's, um, I waited a long time. I used to joke with the kids, I'm going to be in the wheelchair holding the baby by the time you guys get to it. Um, all our kids generally today are all, you know, later having kids mm -hmm. in their thirties, you know, um, and uh, that's okay, you know, because they wanted to have a career, they wanted to have a life, they wanted to travel um, and they will get to it. You know, the, this expectation, I was late, I was 28 with my first one, and that was already, God, you're old, <laughs> because everybody was having them early 20s. And I think the more living you can get under your belt before you commit to family, which, because family is forever, the, the better. And so whenever you have an example of somebody who's truly lived, um, I look at Jane Goodall. Oh, I, God. You know, I don't, example. have you seen the documentary, Jane? I haven't. Oh, if, if you get a chance to, I really recommend it. I mean, her passion and her dedication, you know, mm. to the chimps, to, to her work, you know, it was her life's blood to, to speak up for this. And the, but the patience that she had in that commitment, just to sit with them day after day after day until they got used to her. Yeah. until they sussed her out and say, okay, all right, you know, you, you're not here to harm us. And then when they befriended her, you know, like she's mama, um, <laughs> you, you've got to have that, that dedication to something that, that really is going to be that drive. And we look up at women like that and, you know, Oprah is one. Oh, know, certainly. You yeah. know, and, uh, and so many others. And they've also beaten the stereotypes and they've gone through their own struggles to get where they are today. You know, you look at them where they are today. Yeah, look at their journey. It hasn't been easy, but right. they've paved the way for you so that it's easier for you today. And that inspiration of who they are today has lit the path for you to walk. All right, so yeah, I mean, age has really got its benefits. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> um, you when did you start writing these books you wrote this one book um last year so it came out last year i did one yes um that came out in <clears throat> 2020 and i you know this was a retirement this was an encore career for me mm. i stopped working when i was 63 and uh, i started pursuing writing um really in earnest and i'd always my degree was in writing and poetics but it was the first time I'd really had the time to do mm. that. And I think I, I was lucky that I was actually able to retire and, and pursue something else. But yeah, the first book came out. It was a joyful experience. Um, the second book comes out um, August of 2021, which is also about aging, but from a little bit different perspective. It's called Creatrix Rising, Unlocking the Power of Midlife Women. Mm -hmm. Because I think this journey really begins at midlife. Actually, I think it begins at menopause. I think menopause yeah. is the, the kind of the spiritual bridge. It's an initiation that leads us from the motherhood years mm. to the next part of our life. And unfortunately, we mostly see menopause as a biological process. And it is that, certainly. I won't take away from that. Mm -hmm. But it's also a psychological and a spiritual process. Yeah. And there's a reason that one is so filled with emotion during this time. And you can't blame it all on the hormones. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, there's a lot of um, unfelt emotion that comes up. There's a lot of emotion that deserves attention, that wants to be harnessed into something creative. That really is the great creative surge of midlife that happens to women at menopause. So um, that's the second book is not just about menopause. Mm. I just use that as, a, as an example. As, the catalyst as, too. Yeah. That's when it really begins. That's when the arc of that journey begins. Well, so, it's, the, um, it's the time where, where you know, you, 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 you'll never stop being a mother, 
right? I mean, that's, that's a lifer. But it is time where it's permission for yourself. It's permission for you to, to go and fulfill that dream or pursue that passion or to take that time for yourself to say no to others. You know, um, yeah. we can be of service, but, you know, we've kind of probably been a little bit of servitude in the past. And it's yeah. OK now to, to say, you know, no, I'm, I'm taking some time for me. And that, I think, is that wonderful crossover of like, yeah. it is now my journey for me. You know, it's interesting that you bring that up because I got an email from a, a girlfriend today that, who lives in Colorado and she's a minister in Colorado. And she was talking about her newsletter today was talking about sacred selfishness. Mm -hmm. She said, you know, there's this kind of narcissistic selfishness, which is where we don't want to go. But she said, you know, you get to a later part in life and there is a there is a selfishness that is a sacred selfishness to self care and taking care of oneself. And as you were talking about earlier about the energy where you spend your energy. Yes. And at this age, it's like, well, do you really want to spread your energy that thin? You know, so you've, you've got a limited amount. It's different yes. than the energy you had yes. when you were 20, yes. you know, where you could just like keep it fueled on Starbucks after Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, how do you want to use that energy? And I, and I think that there is a kind of, yeah, it's, it's a good selfishness. It's a yeah. sacred selfishness at this age where you pay attention to what do I want to do now? You know, I'm not in service to my children now. If you've done your job, your children have grown and, yep. you know, they're out doing their lives. Yes. So it's, um, it's time to do it for yourself. It's, you know, I think in, in the 20s, 30s, 40s, it's all mindfulness, you know, and now it's soulfulness. Oh, yeah. You know, if the soul is not speaking, for me, if, if, if the soul is not in agreement. I mean, the heart and soul have to be in agreement. That's my core. And if it's not in agreement, I ain't going to do it. Because I know it's going to cost me more than it should. But if the heart and soul is in agreement, I know that I've got all the divine wind behind my back to do what I need to do. Yes. And, th and that's a beautiful image that the divine wind is at your back. This was really Carl Jung's work at the end of his life, you know, the purposefulness of life and in you know, like I said earlier, there's a reason that nature keeps us alive past mm -hmm. midlife because you're not here to create kids anymore. Nope. You're not here to see for the proliferation of, of the species, um, but you can create a sense of purpose and a, a, how you spend your energy and how you spend your time and very deliberate conscious choices that can only be made when you're slowing down, when you're in a contemplative mode. And that's also one of the great gifts of years. And, you know, even if you're slowing down um, and you need help, you know, uh, for some people, the, the bodies aren't the same and they need, they need some help from their kids. That is okay. You're not stealing time from them. You gave them 20, 30 years of your life. <laughs> you know, for them now to care about you is okay. Right. Uh, well, I don't want to do this. They're young and this and that. No, for them to step up and care for you. No, I'm not talking about 24-7. Um, it, it happened with my mom the last five years of her life. She was bed bound and my brother and sister were looking after. My brother ended up with a heart attack looking after her because it was him on his own doing it for most of the time. And that was too much because he needed help. And he only got it after the heart attack up until then. Oh, you can look after her. You know, you can work full time and look after her. Um, that is a different type of caregiving and where you need to get other people in to help you. The village, the team, the whatever the medical is. You, you know, you do bring up an interesting point, though, because you describe that as the last five years of her life. Yeah. And I think that that kind of infernment that we associate with older age doesn't really come till the end. Mm. People do not spend decades in bed. Right. You know, and with my mother, similarly, you know, she had a good quality of life up until a point in her 80s. And then there was this kind of steady decline that happened. Mm. But it was a short window of time compared to the life that she lived. Mm. And I think that we also we live in a time of medical, natural yes. intervention. We know so much more about health yeah. than we did 50 years ago. You know, 50 years ago, we would never have said to a 65 or 75 year old woman, absolutely, get out and walk every day. Yes. We would have said, no, no, relax, don't do that. Yeah, slow down. <laughs> yeah. 
so much more that really that part of getting old, which is the part of getting old that I think really scares people. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be a burden to someone. But you have to keep in mind that that's small. Here, small. I'm going to give the... Yes. (laughs) you had an example in comparison to your life we're talking about maybe a few years Mm -hmm. at most maybe a few months at most yeah you know my friend austin with the clawfoot bathtub um she got a kind of cancer that was very aggressive in her brain and it was really a matter of months Mm. she lived a full life right till the very end so I, I think that it's something we worry too much about. And it's one of the old stereotypes yes. of getting old means X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And I go, well, maybe it doesn't mean X, Y, and Z anymore. Maybe well, it's, it's just- it's, well, it's the same thing with somebody saying to you, at your age. Well, e- excuse me. <laughs> uh, what is my age meant to be at 66? You know, is it, am I, you know, meant to be just kind of sitting down watching life go by? You know, it's uh, what is your definition of act your age? Now, you know, if I started dating a 20 year old, yeah, that's totally different. You know? <laughs> but it is uh, uh, how many people do we see now, which we've never seen before, you know, either in nursing homes or in groups, you know, they're going out on holidays together. They're going out dancing every week. They're, they're going out on hikes. They're going out on this. Or I used to belong to a pool thing, you know, where aquatic exercise and everybody go off for lunch afterwards they're active they're doing something they're participating in their lives but this actual age who defines what that should be well i guess we do i do you do we're redefining it (laughs) and we're redefining it exactly and you know activity i think is is an important point because that is what keeps us feeling vital whether it's walking or it's um, tomorrow is my husband, my husband's 70th birthday. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go kayaking. Nice. And we love to be on the water and we love to kayak. And it's just the movement. Keep yeah. moving. The great New York dancer and choreographer, Twyla Tharp, wrote a book. I think it came out a year ago called Keep It Moving. Mm-hmm. And it's a great mantra mm-hmm. for this stage of life. And I love her premise that um, all of dance is either about a contractive motion or an expansive motion. And if you are contracting in life, in your body, the mind and heart are sure to follow. Yeah. So you have to keep expanding with the contraction. So also, so the mind and heart can follow. So keep it moving, keep some activity walk circles in your court if that's what you can do but do something that keeps it moving it is the motion and the forward motion of life that keeps i think our heart and our mind young you know the this wonderful thing like tai chi or qigong exactly and, you know the you would talk about expansion everything about that is a deliberate movement of flow and mm-hmm. no you are not asking you to do aquatics or jump up and down and you know as you said you can't run anymore you know the, the, the certain parts of our body that say uh uh-uh, uh wear and tear had enough please change your exercise routine there are so many things that you could do swimming is wonderful you know swimming i, I love doing you know unfortunately pools have been closed for a year um but as soon as the weather gets good i've got to find a lake um swimming is wonderful not only is water incredible conduit it's a fantastic place to to do some spiritual exercise too but if that water is just something that as you are exercising it's massaging you you know and you can do so much more in water that maybe you can do on land so there's always something you can do it's just go and look for it right that's right stay active stay engaged give your life meaning but that's the physical aspect the mental aspect is huge now i live with an 87 year old who's about to be 88 in july she still drives she'd still work if she could uh she's faster than i am she can run i can't she's um got so much strength now memory's going short-term memory definitely going and that's one of the reasons i'm here is because things can be forgotten very very easily but she does her puzzles And she's Mm -hmm. engrossed in these puzzles and hours of dedication. 
uh, of it. And it's being engaged in something that keeps your mind engaged. So whether you have a hobby, or whether you've started a new career or not, or whether you're just enjoying retirement, you have to be engaged, mentally engaged in something, because if you don't use it, you will lose it. Yes, I, I so agree with that, whether it's, it's writing, it's reading, it's puzzles, it's, uh, we like to play Scrabble. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it's any podcasting. Of, <laughs> any of those things. Uh, I'm a terrible speller, so I'll, I'll make up words. Oh, yes, me too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Dyslectic too, so they go the wrong way around. <laughs> but you're right. Anything to keep the mind engaged. You know, mm -hmm. it is a body, mind, spirit thing. Yes. And then, of course, the, you know, the spiritual piece too is that place of getting comfortable with the fact that we're all made of stardust and yes. from stardust, that's where we return to. Yes. And that's not such a bad thing. And that when the body's over, the body's over. Yes. But the accumulated of spirit um, experience that we've had in this body rises. And now sometimes we come back and sometimes it just goes up into the universe and becomes part of the knowingness for someone else. And that knowingness is opening up those channels from your heart, from your soul to your spirit and allowing your mind to know what it needs to know when it needs to know it. And that's that beautiful divine connection. And I think as we get older, um, I've always been this way. This is the way I was born. But for many people, that spiritual connection has just become far more of that warm arms around them mm -hmm. where it's, it's like, I'm not afraid of death. Um, I know I'm going home. And the closer I get to it, the more I open up spiritually to what I need to know here now. And I think less frenzy of the mm -hmm. human condition and more calmness, more serene serenity, which is so nice. <laughs> well, it's certainly, it's certainly the great mystery mm. you know, that w awaits at the other end of the arc, isn't it? And there are great transformative forces that mm -hmm. just towards death. And I've thought a lot about it, you know, as, as I get older, it's a conversation that comes up with my friends and I, well, what do you think it is? Well, what do you, you know, and it, we, we've come up with all kinds of things. The truth is no one really knows, but I just have this great sense in the core of my being that it is nothing to fear. Yeah. Energy does not die. The yeah. body dies. And Believe you, by the time the body dies, you know, you're kind of done with it anyway, right? Right. So, but energy somehow goes on. Absolutely. Where it goes, how it goes, I can't tell you. But there's, there's a great sense of peace in that, just knowing mm -hmm. that I don't know how it goes on, but I do know that it's, there's nothing, there's nothing bad waiting to happen. No. There's nothing ominous waiting to happen. Right. There is, the universe is love. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, you know, sort of my spiritual path isn't any more complicated than that. The universe is love. Yeah. And you tap into whatever degree you're capable. Right. And love is the great transformative force in life, and it will be the great transformative force in death. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. That's the absolute truth. And this whole thing of heaven and hell, you can live a heavenly life. That's right. Or you can live a hell life. Hell. <laughs> yeah. And I've, all of us have touched hell somewhere along the line. And, and that makes us appreciate the heavenly life more. And, you know, um, whether you, you call it God, source, energy, what, you know, the divine, it doesn't matter what the title is, that beautiful energy of love you know, can, it lives on such a, a high frequency that we can't knowingly do any harm to anyone in that state of love. And if we choose to live in that state of love in our lives, that we can't knowingly do any harm to anyone, even if someone is harming us, that we rather blanket them with love um, so that it may penetrate their fear, their hate, you know, their whatever they're going through. It's, I know it's a harder one to do, to love somebody that's done you wrong or to give them love. Um, but at the same time, it, it penetrates them in a way that they don't know and it, it lights something inside of them that eventually hopefully with enough warmth and love will grow i would love to see love be on the top agenda of everyone's life and um, whether young or whether older 
I just think that love should be the ultimate goal in the way that you live your life. And when you do, that's when the clarity comes. Yeah, I, I think that love is, you know, it can be hard won though in one's life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we, um, success is built on the back of failure. So to oh, speak. yes, yes. You know, oftentimes we don't know what hurts somebody else. Right. And we get like a little beyond it and then you go, oh, geez. Yeah, no, I wish I hadn't done that. <laughs> I hadn't done that, wish I would have behaved differently. Yeah. You know, I mean, my 20s were just kind of stupid in, in that way. <laughs> yes. In a certain way. Um, and yet I, I think it's the great, um, it's the great thing to strive for. Yeah. In life, um, love, forgiveness, the act of forgiveness. There are some people that I, it's tough yeah. to love them, like you say. Yeah. And sometimes the best you can do is forgive which yeah. is a way of like letting go say which you know, is essential is yeah. essential yeah because when you talk about people. moving on mm -hmm. you don't want to take your angst with you because right. if you are a spirit that's coming back they're going to come back with that angst and go to what the hell is this but it's interfering with my life so you know i say whatever whatever's in your life that you need to clear up whatever issues you have clear them up now in this lifetime face them go through the process let them go and hopefully you do some good reading. Yeah. Stay. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of inspirational people out there that I didn't have the patience to read mm -hmm. when I was a young woman. And um, that can inspire and ignite. You know, first of all, it's good for your brain yeah. to read. Yeah. Um, second of all, there's just some wonderful stuff out there. You know, stories of fear, stories of love, yes. the great transformative forces in life that keep us all going. And um, you know, it, it's your experiences, like what you've written. You know, you've put in your transformational experience into that book on aging and then somebody read it and it's like, oh, I hadn't seen it from that point of view. Oh, that shed lights on something. Oh, I don't need to be afraid of getting older. And that's what reading is about. It is, you know, writing is that for reading for people to pick up and, and be inspired by something. I always refer to this little book, Who Moved My Cheese? Who Moved My Cheese. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. And I th the reason I, I bring it up almost in every show is... If we understand what our um, perceptors are, our personality types are, then we actually have a better understanding of how we perceive and how we interact in life. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, who moved my cheese? Two mice, two men around abundance of cheese. The cheese is gone and it's the reaction. And if we're reacting in a certain way, that kind of indicates what kind of personality trait we are and how, the perspectives that we have on life. If we're aware of that, if we're aware, oh, that's my tendency, that's my personality type, but I can change that perspective. I can look at something differently. And I think that's something that getting older gracefully does, is that what you used to sweat and get upset about, you no longer do. Because you can just go, okay, that this, there's no need to get uptight about this. There's no need to, um, to be angry about that. You know, I can have an opinion, but I'm just not going to get all uptight about it because you realize you don't want to spend your energy on that anymore. Right. That really is the grace mm -hmm. of growing older. Yeah. So being able to make those different kinds of choices. I mean, you've got the grumpy old men, you know, they made a good couple of movies on that. And there's a plenty, a lot of grumpy old women. Right, out right. There, you know? If you're grumpy, it doesn't matter what age you are. You're just grumpy. Right, right. <laughs> and you've got to deal with that. But, you know, holding my grandson for the first time last week, you know, and, and I remember what it was like holding my children, the whole chemical reaction you get from your first hold your child. Oh. And then, you know, holding my grandson, realizing it was a totally different reaction but and a totally different connection and it was a a more peaceful connection and just being able to look at him and and you know wonder what his life is going to be uh feel those chakras that were very much aligned and it was just a very very serene moment where when you hold your own child there's a kind of a different euphoria to it I suppose the chemicalization because you've given birth, but when you're holding that grandchild, it's a, it was a different feeling and it was just such a, a peaceful feeling. Which and is, what is, what is the little guy's name? His name is Rowan, R-O-E-N. Oh. So he's three weeks old today and I'm going down there on Wednesday to look after him while she goes for a doctor's appointment. So Happy yeah. Happy birthday, Rowan. Yeah. Yeah. Three weeks. Yeah. Might as well give him a shout out. 
<laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. I mean, you know, I've already got an image of what he's going to be, and that's. I think that's also something that's really nice as a grandparent is that you're not raising them, so you can have a, a wonderment and you can do some guidance and nurturing and this and that because you're not in the day to day. You know, when you're in the day to day, you want to get them fed and you know dressed and off to school and you know, uh, have they done their homework and you know are they not scraping themselves and you know, are they safe today? With a grandchild, it's a totally different thing, which like, I'm really liking this. <laughs> so. It's like you get to play with them and then give them back. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, do you remember Auntie Mame? Of course. Maybe, right. Because right, I want to be kind of the grandma Mame. You know? oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I think, you know, I think it's one of the things of redefining grandma. Yes. Or, or old auntie. Yes that you know we get to be that kind of outrageous be bold be yes. brave you know you don't have to fall into a corner and become a stereotype granny no nope. you know why not be the one i mean i would want a grandchild of mine to think wow she was great man she was like so into like cool stuff and i loved hanging out with her and i love talking to her that's what i'd want a, a kid to have yeah. we had so much fun she made up great games it, yeah. yeah yeah kind of showed me life in a different different perspective you know to what the parents do because the parents are always raising their children in a different way so yeah, yeah. i really am looking forward to that growth there and yeah i think i think that is for everything isn't it even though um, i've been doing podcasting now for nine years i came at it at 57 i didn't even know what a podcast uh -huh. was when i first was asked to join a network i was there 13 months doing live shows and it was a great learning I call it the soap opera training you know you're thrown in at the deep right. end and, you know single <laughs> swim and then I started my own network which in June will be eight years the people that I've interviewed are like yourself who have just said you know I've lived the expectation life and it was okay but it really wasn't me and I'm now know who I am or I want to know who I am and I want to do something that I'm passionate about and and it doesn't matter what my age is you know, I've got the freedom to do it now and I'm going to do it. And I think it, it's so illuminating and exciting and invigorating and inviting. Yes. And I think it's a great message actually for any age. Yeah. I mean, yes, we do it at this age, but yeah. you know, I mean, that's just a great message for how to do life. Yes. You, yes. you know, I think that the, the human soul strives and struggles to have to do life on one's own terms. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't that the ideal? That I mean, that's what feminism yeah. is all about. You know, you women wanting to do life on their own terms. Don't tell me who I am. Don't put me in a box. Don't label me or objectify me. Yeah, I'm and not going to burn my bra for you. No, they need the support. <laughs> <laughs> but the same is true of old aging. It's like, you know, don't objectify me. Don't put me in a yeah. box and label me. I want to do life on my own terms. Yes. And so that's what these later years, you know, you do have that choice. You do have that possibility. Mm -hmm. And once again, that sense of insignificance of life receding away, that's a call that's coming from inside the house. Mm -hmm. There's still inner work to be done. And part of that inner work is to realize that you do have significance. You do have rev relevance mm -hmm. and you can have purpose until the day you die. It is never too late. You are never too old. Um, it is about meaningful purpose. You know, it's um, when you have a reason to get up every day. And, and I know, you know, that my, my one friend who's a retired teacher, obviously with COVID, it's not been the same, but she would have something on every single day. You know, book club, picket ball, this, that, etc. Every single day she had something. And she does absolutely you know for her it was that purpose to get up and see her friends and do things with this group and that group you know not everybody's going to start another career or become the author but please be interactive participate in life life is for living and yes you can do it at your own pace but don't stop and say this is it now i'm just waiting to die mm -mm -mm. you live to the very last moment Good stuff. Whichever way you can. How do people get your book? And is, yeah. can they pre-sign up for the new book? Or? Yes. Yes, the book is on, the first book, A Delightful Little Book on Aging, 
um, is available certainly on Amazon. I like to tell people that bookshop.org or indiebound.org are good places to buy the book because um, that the fun, some of those funds go to the local bookstores, mm -hmm. bookshop.org. Um, and you can really find it anywhere. You could go to target.com or barnesandnoble.com and you, you would find it, but um, that's how you get a delightful little book on aging. Um, the new book, Creatrix Rising, Unlocking the Power of Midlife Women is available for pre-order on amazon.com. It's available for pre-order also on indiebound.com and bookshop.org. Bookshop. Yes, bookshop.org. <laughs> I keep wanting to put the dot com at the end. Yeah, I know, it's very easy. We're, we're so dot com nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, that's available for pre order and that will be released on August 23rd of this year. So. And you have a site? I have a site, byline stephanie.com. And what will people find on there? I know you've got resources and your books and yeah. your blogs. I have, you know, I Kind of what my message is and mm -hmm. certainly my books and i do a weekly blog i send out a monthly newsletter i do have a resource page um, part of my purposefulness in this time of life is that i find organizations that i can interact with mm -hmm. that i think are doing good in the world so i'm going to be teaching a class here in austin at dress for success which is a wonderful mm -hmm. um dot org organization um, that helps give women a second chance so um they have some personal development classes in in writing and and whatnot at any rate um you will find resources there blogs and mm -hmm. the like and you obviously love what you're doing i do love what i do i love my life you're right exactly and isn't that what life is meant to be you know yes we have struggles yes we fall flat on our ass and we have had to get back up over and over again but each time it's been a lesson learned it's been a redirect or, you know, a little step to the left or the right, you know, um, it's, it's all about that getting back up. And I know sometimes it's hard to get back up after a knock down, but it, okay, take a moment, sit down there and go, okay, before I jump up and do the same old thing, am I meant to redirect altogether? And it's okay to do so. And by listening or reading to people who have gone before you, they are the best teachers in the world. They've been where you've been. How did they do it? What mindset did they get into? What heart set? What soul set? What became their, their passion or their calling? How can you find it in yourself? Listen to the podcast, read the blogs, read the books. This is your participation in your own learning. And you will discover things about yourself that you perhaps never allowed yourself to know before. And when you do and you set those wings free, then you really understand that the cosmic wind and that divine wind underneath those wings and then gosh life is really for living let's just go and live it yeah. there's a real calmness about it isn't there yeah there is I, no franticness about it just ah, live it <laughs> <coughs> which is a wonderful place to be purpose we all need that we all want to know that we've got a reason to get up in the day and even if it's just going to your local coffee shop on a walk along the way and smiling at everybody and saying hello and patting dogs and having a conversation with someone it's still a purpose but just don't give up and don't give in uh don't die before your time right on don't die before your time so really really important uh you have some social medias too that people can get hold of you at um i am on facebook byline dash stephanie on um, Instagram, I'm byline dot Stephanie because I don't think they do the dash. I don't think they do the dashes. It might be byline dash Stephanie, but one of no, them. It's more. dot. It's dot. <laughs> right. I've got dot here on Instagram. All right, great. And you're also on LinkedIn. And I and I'm on LinkedIn. Yeah. And, and I'm not sure how I'm on LinkedIn. Do you have it in front of you? <laughs> yes, I do. You're in LinkedIn, and it's it's Stephanie Raflock, which is R A F F E L O C K. Great. Right. So I'm glad one of us knows that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've had so many different things I've set up at different times and every single one of them has different names. So. <laughs> you never like I never give out my social media handles. Right. It's not like, you know, someone says, well, what's your social media handle? It's like and when you sign in, 
you just hit the tab. Yes. You know, and you're there. And so yeah. I don't think about signing in. So I don't and, really until you're it. logged out and you've got to remember how to sign in. <laughs> okay. It's like phone numbers. Yeah. Everything is in my cell phone now. Yes. I don't memorize numbers. I used to memorize people's phone numbers. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. And I learned the other day that the phone holds the thing, but if you lose the phone or it breaks, you lose the numbers. So what you do is instead of saving it to the phone or you can save it to the phone and to Google. So it goes up into your email uh, yeah. contacts as well. So little Very tips. Good. And you know, this is, this is something else, a little point actually for uh, when I first started this, I, you know, working on the computer, ha 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 ha, what are you talking about? You know, and I do my own editing and do everything. I wear all the hats. Had you told me I was going to wear all of these hats, I would have run away. Uh, and that's the thing is it's okay to start something new technically and you don't quite know what you're doing, that is where it's fantastic to ask a younger person that, that your wisdom and your passion for what you're doing is going to rub off on them and their expertise is going to teach you and it bridges the gap. So don't get uh, intimidated by, you know, the cyber world or the internet world or the computer. There's, we've, we've still got it in us to learn new tricks. Right, and learning curve is a great way yeah to keep vitality in your heart and mind. Yes, yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're never too old for anything. Maybe, you know, joining the Olympics, you know, <laughs> there are some boundaries <laughs> within reason, but it's still never too late to try something new. And if you feel you want to, give it a try. If it doesn't work out, doesn't matter. You tried, right? And it may lead you to something else, but please don't say, oh, I'm too old, no. No, you might have to do a different version of it, but just go and try something. You never know until you try. So leave us with some words of wisdom. Oh gosh, words of wisdom. Um, life is meant for living. Once again, this is a remarkable and noble passage. Embrace it as such, embrace the years, celebrate each and every year, celebrate each and every day. Mm -hmm. Love life in all its glory ups and downs and everything right it's just still so worth living <laughs> okay folks so while you're looking at the oh i've turned 50 or oh i've turned 60 or oh i've turned 70 just look at it go oh it's a new chapter i wonder what the 50s or the 60s or the 70s or the 80s are going to bring to me and participate because i promise you it's a good age to be until next time folks Bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at self discoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.